Well, hello there, and welcome back to Kenny's Real World Photography. I hope you're doing okay. If you appreciate these videos, don't forget to subscribe, okay? I'll tell you this all the time. I'm just trying to get a few subscribers, some, some people to listen to this. If I'm going to make a video, try to listen a little bit, okay? Uh, but anyhow, I hope you're doing okay. Um, I thought today, uh, I am not a big macro photographer. From time to time, I, when the bugs are out and the flowers are pretty and everything, I, I like to get out and and shoot a little. I have, um, I have a little 40 millimeter Nikon um, lens that works really good. It's super sharp. Uh, but uh, with that 40 fill, but a little, little, with that 40 millimeter lens, I gotta get really close. So maybe it's. I wish I had something a little different for, you know, bugs that are moving a little bit more. Or I don't want to get stunned by you know a wasp or something like that. Uh, but macro photography is really, really popular, you know, and, and like I said, from time to time, I really get into it. Uh, when I was in China, I had a Sigma lens that actually did pretty well with the macro. It was a 70 to 300 uh, lens that had this 70 to 300 uh, DG macro. And actually, the macro was not that bad, you know, for me, for what I needed. You know, I just wanted to get the closer than the average shot and that's the whole idea of macro you know I mean I, there's people out there on their net you know you can look inside the bugs eyes and all that kind of stuff and I'm not into it quite like that I just like to have a nice close-up uh, but when I was over there uh, and I was doing this quite a bit uh, one year and so I bought some extension tubes and that's all I thought I'd talk about just a little bit today talk about some extension tubes and how they can be used in your macro photography. Uh, and believe it or not, they work really good, but they have, there are some problems with them. Uh, but here, I, I looked at B&H the other day, and I saw the extension tube kits, huge range of prices, but you can get some that I thought were probably pretty decent for around $80, you know. Uh, but the ones I bought when I was in China, I'm not for sure of the brand, uh, but uh, I wanted something that, um, if you look here at the back end, let's start, let's start right here. Uh, this is made to pick up on the autofocus, um, and it's got a metal mounting bracket, so the quality, quality is actually pretty good. Uh, and like on all of them, you get three different... Let me see if you can see this. You get three different uh, millimeters. Now, like on this one, uh, usually when I shot, I didn't use all three at the same time. I usually use one or two. But, you know, here we got a uh, 36 millimeter, 20 millimeter, and a 12 millimeter. Uh, and you can use this in any variation. Uh, you'll have to experiment with your lenses to see what works best on your camera. Uh, when you use extension tubes, uh, the one problem I found is that you have to get really close, a lot of times almost touching, or actually actually touching what you're shooting. And like I said, if you're shooting a bee or a wasp or something that might bite you, you might want to be a little further back, and you probably will have to buy a uh, a lens, you know, like a 105 or something like that, where you don't have to be right on top of your subject. Uh, but these these lenses work really good, uh, or these extension tubes work really, really good here. Like I said, most time, most time I just use this big one. I, it may be the the two biggest ones together. Uh, but what will happen uh, when you use the extension tube, you're going to get really, really close. And you can use your autofocus, but what I normally would do, because uh, I was out walking around when I was using these, and we'll get to something else here in just a second. But walking around, you know, if I had a bee or a bug, you know, I would just kind of zoom in until I, I was getting acquiring focus, you know, then I'd move just a little bit to get the sharpest focus, and I would take the shot. Because I'm out walking around, and, and when I'm walking around those parks in China, I'm trying to shoot 
I was trying to shoot everything, so I didn't carry a tripod with me or anything like that. But I noticed right away and um, that you've got to get right on top of what you're shooting. So that can be a problem. Uh, if you are going to shoot everything in a still format, you know, flowers or a dead bug or something that's not <laughs> moving so fast, you know, the extension tube's going to be okay. Uh, but I urge you, uh, if you get into this very strongly, get a tripod, get something really, really stable when you take that shot. And that way you can get right up on it and the picture will be sharp. Because one thing... Shooting up close and getting sharp pictures can be almost the same problem as trying to shoot something way off with a zoom lens. You need that stability of the tripod to get that sharp, clear shot. And another thing, when you're really close with these extension tubes, or anytime you're really close to your subject, and if you've uh, messed with product photography, you know, or anything like that, when you, the closer you get, the more light restriction you have. And you may have to use flash somehow. Uh, so it gets more complicated when you're right on top of your subject. Uh, so you got to think about these things. Macro photography is really fun. And like I said, there a lot of people, when I get old, that may be the only thing I'm able to do is go out and sit in the chair and shoot bugs on flowers anyhow. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I want to learn how to do this pretty good. Um, but it's a cheap way, way cheaper than a micro lens to get an extension tube. And if what you're shooting is primarily something that's not going to be moving, it's going to be like basically still photography, get you that tripod, get you some, some extension tubes. Like I said, it doesn't cost much. Uh, and go with it. It's okay. Uh, like I said, the only, the only problem, man, is if uh, you're on the move or you got to shoot free-handed uh, because when you shoot those subjects and you're right on top of them, you know, I may shoot something at 1.8 or 2.8 to let a lot of light in, but the sharpness is super, super critical uh, with macro, way more so than even shooting portraits. Uh, so when you're right on top of something, you just can't afford to shake. So you need to find that comfortable balance between shutter speed and your f-stop to get good shots. And it's going to take some practice. Uh, macro photography, even though it's fun, it, you, it's like anything else, you got to practice. Uh, but I encourage you to go out and try it. It's not going to hurt anything, and it's cheap. Uh, and play with it and see what you get. Uh, and I think you'll be surprised what you can get. And just give it a try, okay? Uh, but I thought I'd, I'd mention extension tubes just a little bit, okay? Uh, and make sure, though, you get... Like I said, uh, B&H Photos got some good ones, and they're around $80, uh, and just play with it. But you have a great day, and we'll talk about something else really, really soon, okay? So bye-bye. Have a good day. You hear me? You better have a good day.